Okay, we are definitely live now. Vicky, welcome to Gospel Rock. Um, Gospel Rock, it's, it's not really, the name means Gospel Good News Rock Christ. So it's the, go the good news of Christ, Gospel Rock. That's all it means. So I just wanted to welcome you to Gospel Rock. And uh, how are you? I am very blessed to be talking with you today live. And I usually yeah. just uh, hear from you, you know, back yeah. and forth on, on Messenger. It's really good to see your face, hear your voice. And Amen. Uh, be as close as we can be this way. Absolutely. Uh, just for technical issue, do you can you check that on Facebook at the moment? Uh, Is it visible? I've got Facebook up, but I can't find you. Okay, let me let me double check that myself. You see, this is technology and this is live, so we're not worried. So let's. See. I was hoping that. Go are. ahead. Oh, you can see it now. Yes. Okay, so from your from my Facebook, you can share on your Facebook. Okay. Oh, it's a little and, bit delayed. And then you mute you mute the sound on your phone. If you can. Or just put the volume right down to zero of your phone. That's what I did. Yeah, and then you can now share it to your own Facebook page and Kim's Facebook page and all the brothers and sisters. <laughs> In Florida right now, Hallelujah! Praise God. Okay, I think I am. Yeah. I think so. I copied a link. Mm -hmm. Normally, at the bottom of our picture, uh huh, it should tell you comment, share. I see comment. Like, yeah. Comment. So you could. So you can. There's a little arrow saying share or something like that. Share to group. Yeah. Okay. I'll share to. <laughs> Keep going. Equipping and. Yeah. Whichever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I don't want to move. If I move from my screen, it might take us off. I so I just want to leave it on. It to the public group about equipping the saints yeah amen all right yeah thank you so basically uh today we're talking about fighting the good fight and um um it's a, a topic that you and i will probably share interest on but what do we mean by that what do we mean by that is that for me as i read the word of god which is the only thing i have in front of me all the time is that um the word of God needs to be believed. It's not something we discuss and argue about, argue over. We need to believe the word of God. And um, <laughs> because when God speaks, it's a king. It becomes law. This is as simple as that. And it's, there's no democracy. So, but the attack of the, on the word of God has been happening since the Garden of Eden. You know, the serpent asked Eve, has God said? You know, because it's always been about questioning what God says. And now if you now have a double minded about what God has said to you in his word, suddenly the faith goes out because to believe is to have faith. You know, they're both the same. So if you cease to believe 100 percent on what God has said, Suddenly, what will happen is that you will not walk in faith anymore. You will not truly believe anymore. You'll be double-minded, and that becomes a challenge. And one of the challenges that you and I are facing is that some of the brothers and sisters, Christians, you know, Jesus says this, and they say, yes, but. Go ahead, my sister. So um, that's a real problem with the church being unified. Mm -hmm. Because um, so many, you know, denominations are uh, kind of based on, well, this is what Jesus says, but mm -hmm. let's mm -hmm. make it, let's make it good for our culture. Let's make it good for our uh, modern times. Let's change it up a little bit to make it mm -hmm. uh, more usable to us. And I yeah. think back about when uh, Lazarus 
um, had died and had been dead four days. And his sister said, well, I know that, um, that, that we'll experience the resurrection in the last day. And Jesus took it farther and said, I am the resurrection and the life. Do you believe this? And that's what now. it comes down to. Now, do you believe it? And mm -hmm. uh, I think we have to constantly ask ourselves, do you really believe it? Because it's not, it's not natural. It's not natural to believe it. And Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you we, for that. Because that's the question. Keep going. Keep going, sister, please. If we don't read and study and know the word and, and be equipped, like, like your title for your group is, if we are not equipped for this work, then we're going to mislead people and cause division because we will yeah. have invented God in our own image. Mm -hmm. And that's and that is a major challenge, and is 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 it's a serious one because the point of the whole thing you nailed it. Do you believe now, not in the future? Do you believe the word of God now? Do you believe what He's saying to you now? Because that's the whole point. But now, if 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 we uh, if we're struggling to believe, there's no problem if we are uh, we're not understanding. You can ask the Holy Spirit and he will help us to understand. He'll open our understanding in Luke chapter 24. That's what he says. He says he opened their understanding so they could comprehend the scriptures. And so we have all the tools available. We have the person of the Holy Spirit available to help us. But Christians need to believe what God says rather than believe their experiences, rather than put their faith in what has happened to them. I have a, a brother and sister Christians who, when I say to them that their salvation is secure, they say, oh, you, you, you're trying to say, so I can go and sin and do whatever I want to do because my salvation is secure. And I'm thinking, why do you think about that first? Why can you say, thank you, Jesus. Oh, my Lord, I'm going to love you more. I'm going to serve you more. Why is it they always think straight away? Oh, so you think I'm, now I can sin and I will not be punished? I'm thinking, what Bible they read it, and why do they always do a beeline to the sin issue rather than thinking the righteousness issue, rather than thinking. So for me, sometimes it's like you're making void the work of the word of the word of Christ, who says, I will lose none. Uh, you know, nobody will snatch them out of my hand. My sheep are given to me by the Father, and it is the will of my I mean, all of those scriptures. And then they go, oh, no, but he says, yeah, but if you don't continue. And I'm, and I'm thinking, you weren't the author of your salvation. Who doesn't? He's you. I mean, who, if you say you're without sin, you're a liar and make God a liar. 1 John 1, 9. There we go. Boom. <laughs> but this I is it. Say recently, you don't wake up in the morning thinking, oh, I can't wait to sin. Let me go. Let me go find something quick. You know, yeah. but sometimes we do wander this way or maybe a little bit that way. God reigns us in. We're, yeah. we're poor wayfaring strangers. We're aliens in a strange place. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're on our own. We're just stumbling along. Yeah. And he makes the path straight. He makes the way smooth. By key, he keeps us in, his, in the palm of his hand under the shadow of his wing where we're safe. And if we start to get off, He's the one that says, whoa, we're at this way. You know, it's, it's kind of like if you're, um, you know, training someone, you're going to not let them just keep going and going until they fall off the path. You'll go after the one sheep and bring them back. I, I like what you just said. You do, it's very deep what you just said. We are stranger on this land. Now think about it. We are stranger in a spiritual realm. So that's what we need our shepherd and the Holy Spirit to lead us. So it's possible, like you said, that we can wander off in the spiritual realm because we, we're stranger to it. So we, we need a total infilling of the Holy Spirit to help us. So no wonder why sometimes we can wander off. Go ahead. If you think of it as uh, being a sailboat on a body yeah. of water, and the wind blows this way and the wind blows that way. Well, the Holy Spirit is the one that tacks when you're supposed to tack. So mm -hmm. 
you don't fall over into the deep it, the the sails turn this way and you have to turn that way he's in control we're just <laughs> the, we're the vessel and yeah. he's in control and of course if the wind blows this way he's going to have to turn the sail that way and mm -hmm. get us back to the the stream of the wind that he wants us to maneuver in we can't do it on our own we can't sail our own boat exactly and it's funny because the, the, the analogy you're making is that we are on the sea. Now, we're not used to the sea. We're not used to be with people of the land, firm ground. So now on the sea, we have to rely on the boat and the wind and everything. And the spirit, Jesus said in, in John, well, in John chapter 3, he said the spirit is like the wind. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where, where it's going. So is he who's born of the spirit. And I'm thinking, that's true. We are in a strange, we're not familiar with the walking in the spirit. Galatians 5, 16, you know, walk in the spirit so you don't fulfill the loss of the flesh. So it's normal that the Holy Spirit help us. So it doesn't mean if I made a mistake today, now I lost my salvation. Now that's it. No, we are in him. We are not outside of him. By faith, by the saving faith, we belong to him. Now, he can chastise us, he can guide us, he can lead us. It doesn't mean I will fall out. And that, so that, and that's my point, my sister. I, I'm going to read you the scripture in Timothy so that people don't think we don't read the scriptures. <laughs> it's, a very, it's a very well-known scripture. In, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, and I know you know this, verse 12, where he says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of oh, eternal life. There are those two words that are missing from the title, but we know that that's, uh, yeah, you know, that's it is the good fight of faith. It's not, all faith, yeah, it is fight. Absolutely. So, fighting a good fight of faith, lay hold of eternal life on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good. Confession in the presence of many witnesses to which you were called. Hallelujah. Go ahead. What did you show? I was just showing the verse for people who wanted to see it. Yeah. Amen. Because this is important. It's important for people to know this. And he says, fight a good fight of faith, lay hold of eternal life to which you were called. You know, that's the call of salvation. You see? So for me, it's like, when we go away from the simplicity of what Jesus says, that is a challenge because we can be distracted, we can be deceived, we can be misled because the religious system make it, makes it feel it's very hard. You have to work for your salvation. You have to do this. If you sin, they're very much sin conscious. I'm not preaching sinlessness, but they're very much sin conscious rather than righteousness conscious, rather than uh, rejoicing in what the Lord has done, in what the Lord has achieved, in what the Lord did before they were even saved. Well, I think that's because Satan is our accuser. He's a, our mm -hmm. adversary. Mm -hmm. And he stands before the throne of God accusing us. Mm. He wants us to think about that. He wants not only us, he wants the Father to say, mm. Mm -hmm. That's sin, that's sin, that's sin. And Jesus is there, our advocate, to stand between, you know, the wrath of God. Yeah. And any little thing that, that Satan can point out as our adversary, mm -hmm. adversary, I should say adversary, to, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and Jesus says, no, he, that one's mine. It's, it's finished. Amen. And, and it's, it's for me, if we can believe that, that simplicity of the gospel, if you can believe that and put all our trust in, in what he said, in what he's doing as a high priest, interceding for us, Hebrews chapter 7. If he's interceding for us, standing in the gap for us, presenting his blood to us, in Hebrews chapter 10, it says, if with one sacrifice, he has perfected. Past tense. Hebrews chapter 10, which, I mean, I can turn to it. Uh, Again, so that people know we're not just saying these things. 
Because that should be our comfort. It should make us cease from worry all the time. In Hebrews chapter 10, it says, verse, uh, verse 9. Okay. Yeah. So Hebrews chapter 10, verse 9. Maybe you want to read in your translation when you have a when you yeah I, when you have I a second. We use the English Standard Version. We talk. I so lot, right. We talk a lot in our Bible studies about translations and how I know they they are. So I I generally do this. Then he added, mm -hmm. "Behold, I have come to do your will." He does away with the first in order to establish the second. Mm -hmm. Verse so, verse ten. And by that will have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Have been sanctified. Past tense. That's done and dusted. Before, before I even came to faith, I found out about this. I, no, when I came to faith, then I found out about this. So it's like I'm finding all the treasures. So what I do is as we fight a good fight of faith, we need to focus on what Jesus has achieved, what Jesus has, has, because otherwise our faith would be in jeopardy in terms of, you know, we, and, I, and I pray to God that it doesn't happen because I pray to God that we begin to believe in that simplicity of the gospel on what he has done. Otherwise, we're making his work void. Well, it goes on to say that uh, some priests offer repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. Yeah. And that's what we do if we're trying to work our way out of being in trouble mm -hmm. through our sin. We can't. Absolutely. We can't Absolutely. Win that. Absolutely. And I think so, a lot of, a lot of uh, religious mm -hmm. activity is trying to wiggle out mm -hmm. of the sin, but not mm -hmm. depend on the blood of Jesus. And the sanctification Amen. that he's doing the work in us. Amen. And 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 I and I don't know where, to be honest, I don't know where that spirit comes from. That spirit of doubt. And that leads to almost unbelief, whereby you you presenting somebody the words of Jesus Christ, you showing them the work that he has done. But it'd be like I had a study on um, I was saying this that. I'm not going to go out anymore and tell the unbelievers to repent of their sins. I love, because I just love that. Because that was a mistake. They can they repent meaning they turn re repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. No repent of your sins, repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn, turn. Yeah. And turn from Yeah, go ahead. Please go ahead. Change the way you think. Oh, yes. before I thought I was in charge. I thought I could plan and make my yeah. life turn out a certain way. I never have been. Change the yeah. way you think. Mm -hmm. He has put all of these things in place. Not mm -hmm. you, not me. Mm -hmm. He has done it. And yes. I, so that way I could, I blamed myself. I blamed other people. I excused myself. I excused other people. You have to change the way you're, you think and see it's all about him, not about us. Absolutely. And I'm thinking, so uh, imagine I go tell a, uh, somebody, an unbeliever, uh, repent of your sins. He's thinking, what are you talking about? Um, it's almost uh, cruel. I think of it as cruel. They can't do it. Yeah. You're, you're I can't go and say, stop smoking now. and stop. You, you can't. Come to Jesus with all your mess and watch what he will do. Matthew 11 verse 27, 28 says, come to me, all of you are heavy laden and burdened, and, and I will give you rest. You know, it, so it's like, them, go ahead. If you tell an unbeliever repent of their sin, you're demanding they do something that Jesus hasn't even commanded them to do yet. Exactly. And and you're saying, so if you tell them before they get saved, uh, that the comment you made at, at the bottom of that video, I really loved it. If you, if you because sometimes you put things in very good words, and, and I like that, I just, just to let you know. Um, because what happened there is that, because you added before they saved, you, you know, if you, if you do that, and then it's like we're preaching sinlessness in that sense, because do we still sin? Yes. So you telling them to stop sinning before they can, that's yep. not possible. Go if ahead. I, I could have stopped sinning on my own. Don't you think I would have? 
<laughs> I would have reached my eyebrows up really hard and held my breath. I would have. I could. I can't. Nobody can. Oh, hallelujah. It's like telling your child to read a novel before they know the alphabet. Hallelujah. Come on now. Come on. <laughs> That's amazing. Because Paul said, I have determined to know nothing. Nothing. Except the cross and 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 Jesus crucified. Amen. Now, that's that's step one for everybody. And if you've done Amen. it in a way, go back. Do that. Amen. Absolutely repent. Actually, if you don't it in another way, repent. <laughs> oh, should we say repent of your repentance? <laughs> Do it right this time. Do it right. You you can never earn. You can never deserve. This is impossible. So the obedience so we're talking. Said, go ahead. During COVID, during lockdown, you said, "Who saved you, Christian? If you're a Christian, who saved you? Can you answer that question? How did it happen? Who saved you? People give you a bunch of different reasons about when were you saved? How were you saved? That's important. Yeah. No, that's important. Yeah. To Absolutely, because if because it's um, you know I use a simple example of children, you know they don't participate in their birth, you know. So if it's the same in a spiritual birth, you don't participate in that. People are confusing the obedience that come out of the fruit of faith, out of the faith of Christ that is in us, that we're walking by faith and we're obeying, we you know we we confessing. You know, all we confessing our sins once to another and vice versa. That's because the Holy Spirit working in us. You know, the other video I was saying, let's go practice tomorrow. Let's let's plan to go sin tomorrow. Let's see how it feels like. <laughs> it, will, it will be like you wouldn't even, it's like even the thought is not even a good thought. You know, and it's, it's kind of like, let's just take the example of um, profanity. Mm -hmm. You know, back before I knew the Lord, profanity didn't bother me particularly. Mm -hmm. You know, it mm -hmm. was kind of if a person wanted to say those things and I've heard it, it didn't really, it mm -hmm. didn't really put a bleep on my radar. And now I watch my mouth. I don't want to be, you know, I'm God's girl. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk like that. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he helps me, you know, he'll, he'll put mm -hmm. it in my mind and mm -hmm. in my spirit. I mean, you know, once in a while, if you hit your finger with a hammer, so yeah. I, have a, I have a hard time yelling, praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, and guess what happened? And when it happens like that, guess what happened? The Holy Spirit will not give you peace until you repent of it. Until you con If you have to confess it to him in the closet or repent of it, you, you, you will not have rest. And, it's and not then once you... Go ahead, go ahead. I, it's not because I care what people might think. It's like I don't. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want God to be upset that I just said that, you know, or, or be ashamed exactly. of. It, you know, I don't like exactly. God's sorrow. I don't like yeah. having God's sorrow at all. Yeah. It just, it's very hard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In Ephesians chapter four, verse thirty says, I think verse thirty says, "Do not grieve the Holy Spirit was given to you by yeah. God." You you know, that's my thought. It's like. What you know? It's like that's all there is, uh, I, because I lo his love is gentle. It's like a dove. He's, he got that car. I'm gonna make sure, Lord, Holy Spirit, help me. You know, and it, for me, it's beautiful to depend on on the Lord and what He has done because that gives Him glory. You know, it's like you know, like the Father. Imagine my son comes home and he says, "Look." Uh, that um, there's some children who attacked me today, but don't worry, you don't have to come to school. I dealt with them already. I'm like, you're depriving me for becoming a father. I want to go and show myself up like a father. I'm like, what's going on here? This is my son. You know, it's, I remember when uh, Miriam argued with Moses and she went, wow, God speaks to us as well. You know, blah, 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 blah. God, the Bible says, suddenly he appeared at the temple of at the tabernacle of meeting, and he, con he told them to come immediately. It was like bang, you cannot mess about with Moses. I speak to him face to face. Who are you? <laughs> you know, out. <laughs> and he was that's how the father will defend and protect us. That's how he you can't mess about now. 
Never mind Moses. Never mind, never mind Abraham. Christ, his beloved son, in whom he is well pleased. You telling me, and who said nobody was snatching him out of his hand? He Come on, fail. man. He can't fail, as you very well said. Come he, on. He's always faithful. Always. That's a fact. He's not, he's not trying. He's not something. No, he's learning. I, you know, I had a, another thought. Um, there was another, still in Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, no, chapter, chapter 4. We can read verse 7. 2 Timothy 3. 7 and 8. No, 2 Timothy 4, okay. verse 7 and 8. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Hallelujah. So, so again, when I look, when I look at that, I'm thinking, Paul had a confidence, not in himself, he knew that there's something, the, 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 the crown is waiting for him. He had a confidence that, you know, that the Lord who saved him is capable, amen, to deliver on what he has promised. Finally, there's a let up for me, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, the day of reckoning, the day of judgment, that day that will present each, all, all, all of us will present each other to the judgment seat of Christ, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And this is what will happen to present ourselves to, for the works that we've done, whether precious, you know, gold, silver, precious stones, or hair, wood, and stubble. That would be so, so for me, sister, it's, when I look at that, and I'm just thinking, if we can keep, no matter what you're going through, no matter who you are, no matter anybody that you know, relatives, you know, we all have challenges around. If they can believe in the simplicity of the gospel, not that they have to, we're not telling them to go work, to go fight, because Jesus saved us before we knew anything. He, 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 he's a seeker. He found us, saved us, he's washing us, he's cleansing us, he's doing whatever he does, and he's stirring us up, He's changing, I was talking like that, he's changing our wills so that our wills are aligned with his will. He's doing the work. And I like that because Jesus said the Father is doing the work in him and now the Holy Spirit is doing the work in us. So it's like, welcome to the sovereignty of God and his son, Jesus Christ. Welcome to the Trinity. Welcome to, for once, you're going to have to relax. And stop thinking you can earn anything. To, to, your, to your brothers and sisters, anybody, when you see them battling and fighting, come over and relax. He's in control. Amen. And, and that's, that's our message, really. And for, for me, I, pray, I want my brothers and sisters Christians to really start believing in the simplicity of the gospel and to wait on him and watch what he will do. Because it's not about how much I do. You and I were talking about the works that we do in Cameroon. And again, obviously, I thank, I thank God for your life, for the support uh, in, in that work. I'm not going there to earn anything. No. It's, I'm going there because you not know, just God has made a way. He opened the doors. And the people we meet is like they're ministering to me. Because... You see the glory of God in the works that you're doing, that he's causing you to do anyway. You see the glory of God. You see somebody who testify and say, look, I've been dealing with this for the past five years. Now, this is the first night I'm going to have a good sleep mm. because she got painkillers. Ah! She thought that it was the witches. He thought somebody, an ancestor, put it on them. They thought that, that pain that I have is 
somebody who hate me who gave it to me they have all kinds of testimony you're thinking what on earth are you talking about and then all those curses being cursed i'm telling you this, this you see that that was a that was a very good reaction you just had because that's how they speak all of a sudden you want to stop them in the tracks before i used to stop and then I was, I was saying, and then I believe the Holy Spirit trained me to say, listen to them until the end, because wow. they have not emptied themselves that way. They have not, because they don't trust anybody anymore, because they don't uh, know who is which. You know, it's like they have to, they have to offload all the garbage, same as we do. You know, the way I grew up, you know, I had a lot, I had and still have a lot of vestiges Mm -hmm. of what um butch and alice called purple grass yeah you know they say if you had a really mean uh father and he told you on purpose the grass was green and he lied about everything you ever knew and you all then all of a sudden you wake up one day and find out you've been lied to all your life and you want all your life you want to know the truth and you find out oh the grass is green and then it starts but Sometimes you have vestiges of purple grass from those, you know, lies you've been taught. Yes, that absolutely. That God has to take them out of the bottleneck of your mind and get them out. Absolutely, absolutely. And 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 this is it. So for me, my sister, it's like once we step out and once you go to those places, then you find out you're not fighting over doctrines anymore. Mm -hmm. Oh, Armenian Calvinists and all of this, and you, you're not arguing with some. No, they just want to hear about Jesus without challenging you. Or what about that doctrine? They don't have any. They don't have any. That's you, a great place to come from. That's a great place to come from, even though they do have witchcraft. And yeah. man, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a hard, that's a stronghold, that, you know, yeah. to put down because they mm -hmm. don't trust. How do you? And that, teach them to trust Jesus. And this is it. And they believe in the spirit. They're all, number one, they're all believing in God. That's a fact. Now, what happened is they confuse the Holy Spirit with the ancestor spirit. Mm -hmm. They're not confused. They, they think the Holy Spirit, when talking about the spirit, is the ancestor spirits, that they, they have to go re do rituals so that he can come and speak to them about the things that will come. That's and then... Thing. That's the same thing with Mormonism. They pray for the dead. They have baptisms for the dead because they are so confused and lied to. Yes. Yes. See? So so that's so now when you go there, now you have to explain and say, all right, that's what you think it, it is. But now let me talk to you about a God who is eternal, who sent his son Jesus. And you know, it's so beautiful because now. Uh, the text I sent to you is that because they kind of know that you have no agendas, they know that you've been you've been coming, you've been helping the kids, you've been doing this and that. So they're seeing the manifestation. So now they can believe in what you're saying because you know you're not trying to get something out of them. They see the love. They see the demonstration of the love, and it's like. So they can sit, my sister, you don't even, listen, you don't need to open the Bible. You can talk to them and talk to them. And then it's only when you finish, after you like, oh, Lord, thank you. <laughs> then now, because you have to prepare some Bible, you, I'm, I'm looking for French Bibles there. I'm trying to associate with, you know, sometimes I have to go back to the Catholics because they have Bibles available there. <clears throat> so that they can read. And now some of them don't read French even. They're illiterate. So you have to have somebody. So one of the prayers, apart from the teacher, the volunteer teacher, uh, we finding uh, a volunteer English teacher. And we find, we're looking for a volunteer pastor. But someone who has an understanding and who can translate the French Bible to the local patois. Mm. Um, so these are the prayer target that really if you were to pray hi Karen God bless you thank you for joining us I have I have the I have our dear sister Vicky Rose with us Karen 
God bless you and thank you for joining us. Yeah. Mm. Hallelujah. So, so basically, the, the target prayers, as the Lord allowed me to go, is are the the French minister of God, basically, who can read the Bible and translate. Obviously, who has a correct understanding. That's very important. I have, I have, I didn't want to leave anybody that I don't know. I rather they wait for me than having somebody who is not doing it right. So an English teacher, they're not, they're not, they're not. Sorry, it's good to see you. Yeah, Karen said hello. Um, you know, she's she's happy to see you, Vicky. Um, Karen is our is our number one. You know, we 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 come a long way since 2014. You know, we know each other for a long time. I'm amazing. So basically, if we have those prayer targets about the English teacher, the pastor, and, um, you know, we have that uh, volunteer teacher already. Because what happened, these people, they want to listen to you. They want to hear what you have to say because they have seen that you have demonstrated love already. So it's not difficult for them to believe in what you're saying now. You see what I'm saying? You establish, so, you establish a relationship. Yeah. But based on love. Yeah. And now, so what you do is the little knowledge and understanding that we have, when you get there, you find out it's precious because they're not challenging you, but they're not quoting a scripture back at you. Like, uh, so you cannot think, okay, what are you talking about? They're just taking it all, all in. They're taking it all in. And the kids keep them because the kids remember what you say quickly than the older people. Mm -hmm. So the kids would keep cutting, please come, please come. So it, 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 it's an amazing, and like I said, I pray to God, whether Karen, whether you, Vicky, whether anybody, one day you will come because this time we're going to put the lights. So we'll have electricity through the solar panel. Hallelujah. That's big. Yeah. So uh, we're going to continue to support the the, the, you know, the the other few kids will be added to it. I'm going to assess to see if those from last year that we started supporting, how many came back. So that's why I'm letting the whole week of school next week to finish. So their, their, their school starts on the 5th. So I'm letting that continue because some of them have to come back slowly. Then on the 12th, then now we meet with the school so we can see now we would have seen who's come back, who's not. We can see the parents, what is such and such. Are they still coming and assess all of that? So that's why my presence is needed, but mainly for the gospel. Good. Yeah. Good so, so again, now coming back to the topic we're talking about, keeping the faith. I believe if we can keep the simplicity of the faith, it will go a long way. And if people can see the faith in action as well, it will go a long way. So we need to simply believe. And one of the one of the things, because you know, sometimes we've been fasting many times, and then until I read Isaiah 58 a few a few years ago, and he's saying, This is the fast that I've given you to lose the bond of wickedness, to, to feed the poor. You know, if you see the, if you see anybody naked, you close them. That was in Isaiah 58, long time ago. So because generally when a Christian fasts in, in the West, we fast from food. Oh, I'm not going to eat for a long time. Yes, that's good. But it's not really what God is really after. You know, a Hindu fast, you know, Muslim fast. You, you know, you, you have to do more than what they do. It's, so it's, it's never really about food. It's, it's about Focusing on what God wants us to do. You know, I was naked, you clothed me. I was in prison, you visited me. So it's actually, there are things to do while you are setting yourself apart in, in that fasting. They are orphanage to visit wherever you are. They're always in, in, in every city, in, in every major city. You go in the highways and byways. So the food that you say you, you're not eating, you can give that food under the bridge somewhere. You know, that's for me, it's it's an active thing. It's not a passive, locking yourself away kind of thing. So it's like reviving the faith, my sister. Let's awaken the faith again so that that good fight is fought on the right foundation. 
Well, we've covered a lot, haven't we? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But so, it, it so there you go. To the gospel of the cross. We can never start, absolutely. We can never start anywhere else but there. None of us. Absolutely. Absolutely. We can't start with repenting of our sins without the cross. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And and the cross is central to what we do. The cross is central to what we talk about. And the cross is central to everything. I I, I believe the cross is the uh, for me is the end of the old and the beginning of the new. I believe the redemption that happened at the cross, because it says if anyone is in Christ, is a new creature. Uh, it, it doesn't feel that way, but God knows it will be renewed. So, and I believe the cross, if you, we can understand the cross, you know, that's key, central to our faith. Without a cross, our faith is nothing. You see? And we, uh, we were talking about what Christians uh, that we know in, in all of our cultures and countries get mm -hmm. it twisted because mm -hmm. of uh, cherry picking the verses they like. Yeah. Uh, altering them and only using half the scripture mm -hmm. instead of the whole context of the sentence, like uh, um, they overcame by the, the blood of the lamb, the word of their testimony, and did not love their life unto death. That gets left out. Yeah. We're good with the blood of the lamb. We're good with the word of our testimony. Yeah, but not a, until death, what? Yeah. <laughs> So it's, do you believe, do you believe what he says? The whole thing, not just, bit yeah. bit you know, don't, it's, it's so often you hear a sermon and one little line, the whole sermon is based on a sentence that's taken out of context. And then the pastor adds to it from, you know, stories that you would read on Reader's Digest or something. It doesn't yeah. get down to the real spirit of the word yeah it, it's true and again again this is where like we said if you can read the bible without an agenda if you read the bible without if you notice i just identified the good fight of faith yeah <laughs> now it's clear to as many as possible on, on the bottom on the bottom screen if we can it's funny sister correct me if i'm wrong we come to faith knowing nothing and then after it that, it wouldn't be faith if we knew so. And then after that, we begin to fight over doctrines. We begin to fight over, you know, their different camps. It's like, what's wrong with people? What's, you know, what's wrong with people? We come to faith like sometimes, you know what? I tell you this. I love to remain a child of God, mm -hmm. not a great man of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A child, because a child, you are allowed mistakes, you know, <laughs> and you get chastised. That's okay. But this yep. thing about becoming, a, go ahead. We're supposed to mature in our faith, but we'll always, absolutely. But we'll always be a child. Mm -hmm. Always. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, uh, Sister Lynn just joined us. She goes, "Do you believe, or do you believe you believe?" I like that. She said, she said "There's a difference." It's, it's like we, we can say unbelieving believers. <laughs> it's like I knew I had heard that it pleased God to crush him. To mm, crush Psalms. Son, to crush his own son for our sake on the cross. I know I'd heard that before. Mm -hmm. but it never really soaked into my heart. Just wow. What he, the horror, you know, of the cross. What mm. he had to endure. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and, you know, it wasn't just he bled and died. It's mm -hmm. everything that happened before, during, and after. It was, it was you know, I, I couldn't, I still can't fathom that sacrifice. Yeah. 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 No, my sister, it's, 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 a, it's, I was going to say it's as simple as this. No, it's not simple. Jesus took the wrath of God. And that gets left out so much these days. Absolutely. He took the wrath of God. And that, if we can even, I know in this, in this, uh, in this side of eternity, in this side of temporal, 
we cannot really understand it. God was angry with his creation for years and years and years and years. Remember the first time, Genesis chapter 6, he destroyed the whole thing. Started with eight. And then Sodom and Gomorrah, he destroyed. But he didn't do it for fun. No. Now, when Christ comes, Christ was able to appease God. So, because I remember God, is, God was destroying his creation, not because he hated his creation. He loved it so much. So, it's almost like Christ is like, finally, the Father goes, finally. I can resolve this issue. Finally, I can be reconciled with my creation. Finally, I found one who will fulfill all my will. Finally, Jesus, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5, says, I have come to do your will, O oh God. You know, you, you, a, a body you prepared for me, hallelujah, to do your will. It's like, you remember before the cross, he goes, the hour is coming. Oh, Lord. Take this cross away from me. But ah, uh, uh, nevertheless, this I mean, is the way, this is what I came to do. There was a time that that didn't really grip my heart. Yes. The way God has, has you know, made it now to really yes. focus on that. Yes. yes. And it, it just, it, it results, in, uh, you know, just a uh, deeper love and a uh, deeper desire. Please God. Yeah. And to take, God takes sin seriously. Yeah, absolutely. He does. And, and you know, that it's like, because remember Jesus came to do, he was always pleasing to his father. So God was well pleased with, with Jesus. Right. So, it pleased the father to crush his son because he knew he would resurrect him. He knew that once he goes, remember just at the foot of the cross, he went, so what shall I say? Take, you know, shall I not take, take this? Shall I not drink this cup? For this purpose I have come. You know, so God knew that as the, his son was doing it, I'm going to read to you one of my favorite scriptures. It will encapsulate what I'm trying to say mm -hmm. because sometimes you're seeing in some of my in some of my, uh, in some of my uh, um, my lives I go crazy passionate because so much is welling inside of me. I'm going to read to you one of my favorite scripture, Hebrews chapter five. Amen. I'm looking. Sorry. Yeah. So Hebrews chapter 5, <clears throat> verse 7, right? I'm going to read up to up to uh, verse, verse 9. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7. Jesus, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him, who was able to save him from death. You see that? He knew as he goes through this, the father is faithful to his word. Hallelujah. And watch this. In fact, you, you know what? Do me a favor. I want you to read in your translation. Okay. In mm -hmm. the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications <clears throat> with loud <throat> cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. And he mm -hmm. was heard because of his reverence. Mm -hmm. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. Mm -hmm. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Being Hallelujah. Nated by God, a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. See, see, so basically in, in verse, in verse, uh, in verse seven, what he says was able to save him from death. You see, um, <clears throat> in Psalm, it says he will not let his, you know, him get corrupt, basically in the grave and all of that. So Jesus knew what will happen. <clears throat> but right before it happens, 
in his humanity, he prayed vehemently, fervently, because he knew what was about to happen. And that's what, so for me, it, it helps us to understand that psalm, that it pleased the to crush his son. He knew. But if son knew, and you remember Isaiah, uh, is it 53? When he says, you know, he was, he, he had no form of comeliness. He, he was, he, uh, let me just read it, because sometimes it's better you read it. Because I call that Isaiah, the first gospel, really. Isaiah 53. Yeah, uh-huh. That's for me the first gospel really being preached, being being in the, in the Old Testament. Say so who has who has believed our our report, and to whom the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall know he shall grow before him as a tender plant, and as a root of the, out of dry ground. He has no form of comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty. That we should desire him. Continue on verse 3. He was despised and rejected by men. Hallelujah. Made sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as mm. one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised. And mm. we esteemed him not. Mm. Surely, Keep going. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Mm -hmm. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. Yes. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Mm -hmm. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. Hallelujah. You see, because he, he was smitten, he was stricken. He, all those things happened to him. So no wonder the psalm says, you know, uh, this, you know, he was crushed. The, you, you see, that's what I like about the word of God. It's one big word that you just have to be patient to read it in different pieces that we're being given by different author for about 40 who wrote the Bible. You know, Isaiah didn't know Jeremiah 700 years before, but all of them are talking about the same person. Hallelujah. So you combine that, and then you can understand the whole, the full picture. And that in the end, no matter how weak our faith is, if we can continue to fight the good fight of faith, in the end, God, will be glorified. That's all. It's working for the glory of God. Think about it. Do you think, my sister, we're going to close in three minutes, so don't worry. Do you think, my sister, do you think God will be weeping in eternity? God will be weeping? In eternity? No. Oh. He will be rejoicing, and we will be rejoicing with him. Now, it does not appear like that right now. But there's a famous scripture that you and I, we know, Romans chapter 8, I think verse 27 says, all things work together for, for good. The, for those so, who love the Lord and are called. And are called. Purpose. Exactly. What is the purpose? The word purpose means the original intention that the whoever, let's say the father, the original intention, the reason why things happen. So in the end, the ultimate purpose of God is the glorification. Hallelujah. So now what we don't understand now, we can know that when we see him, we shall be like him. And that in the end, in eternity, he will be glorified no matter what we say. Let's continue to fight the good fight of faith. Any last word, my sister? And you can close in prayer as well. It's just exciting to live during these times and to uh, know that the Lord is in control and that we're not. That he's God. Amen. He's God. He can do it however he wants to. We just have to. If we don't know what to do, we have to just fix our eyes on him. Just watch yeah. out because he's always Amen. doing it. He never suffers. Thank you, Lord. You're not a God who can lie. You're not as a man that you can lie. You are not like a man that you slumber or sleep. But you watch all over each one of us, no matter where we live, because you have determined the time that we lived, that we live and the geographical places that we are right now to do your will for our good and for your glory, Lord. And we just praise you and thank you and everything and for all these things in Jesus name. Amen, my sister. Thank you very much for your patience. 
You see, it happened. It was easy, right? <laughs> I, don't have, I don't have any fingernails left. But yeah. <laughs> God bless you. You did very, very well. And it's not you anyway. The Holy Spirit has helped us. And it's all good. And this is it. We can speak to the world through in, in the comfort of our home. I believe if St. Paul had these tools, he would have used them. I believe if the disciples had these tools, they would have used them as well. Absolutely. So may it God was, bless you. It was a treat being with all of you. I love you. Thank you. God bless you, my sister. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Karen. Bye-bye, Des. Bye-bye, everybody who's watching. Bye-bye, uh, PJ Fetch. God bless you all. Bye-bye.